Welcome back to Crowley House Flower Farm. This week is all about rejuvenating, cutting back, fertilizing the garden. So I'm gonna take you along as we start to cut some things back so that some of the things will have new flushes as they come on through the fall. I do have a big event coming in in September and so I'm just trying to get the gardens semi ready for that. We do have a full plate of weddings coming up. So this weekend is kind of one of my last weekends that I have to just focus on the gardens and get some compost down, get things fertilized, get things cut back. I'm gonna be making a comfrey tea compost because the comfrey needs to be cut back. So I'm gonna show you what I do there, but then I'm gonna take you out to the garden and we're gonna start working on a few of the beds. I did go to the nursery and pick up some things. I'm still working on my big project, which is the Mediterranean or dry garden that I'm working on as well. So I picked up some grasses. I'm just kind of trying to find things as, as they kind of pop in. And I don't know if I'll use them all, but I'm kind of like setting things aside uh, to do this big project. We're gonna be doing it later in August. It's not a very good time to plant, I understand that. But um, I think if I can just keep on the watering and yeah, I probably wouldn't do this normally, but we do have a big event coming in on the farm. It's just our family. When I say big event, we, there's 12 of us in my family. And so then they have their, their you know spouses and siblings and cousins and everything. So it is just a big event. <laughs> So I think there's going to be probably over, I don't know, 40 people here or something like that, 50 people. So I just kind of like, that kind of inspires me to kind of get spots in the garden, just kind of, you know, ready. And I don't know, it gets me out there and inspired because I think sometimes we all, I don't know about you, but we kind of tend to get lazy, especially when it gets hot but uh, this garden I've been really thinking about and I'm really trying to put my, you know, stretch my gardening uh, thoughts, I guess, and really thinking through. A lot of times I just pick up things and I know what goes well together and I have fun with that. But this one I'm really trying to lay out and do a better job with that. So I'll probably take you over and just show you what I'm talking about because it's been a while since I've showed you the spot that I'm working on. But um, for now, we're just gonna stay close to the house. I've got a few things I'm gonna show you here in just a minute that I picked up from the garden center uh, that we're gonna pop into the gardens. And just to make it a little more eye pleasing because right now, I tell you, it's not super great. So this is the little garden that I'm gonna be working on today or this morning. It's basically just this little island that's off the house. I'm going to be working on the front side of it and this is the side that you see from the driveway or the studio and it's just a little overgrown. It has a very large rose which is more of like a shrub rose, little tiny, almost like a um, tea rose or something like that. I don't know the name of it but it's beautiful kind of white blush and then it's got some blackberry in it. It's got some grapevine. It has some thistle. It has a dead dogwood. It has all kinds of things that are lovely and not attractive when you first pull in. So I just bought a few things to kind of tuck in. I'm gonna be cutting back a few things and just putting in some compost, a little bit of fertilizer, and hoping it will look a little bit better than it does when I'm done. So I thought I'd take you along as I do that. I just wanted to take a moment and show you these beautiful hostas are starting to bloom just in their prime. I love that light lavender against the seafoam green. Isn't that gorgeous? These are the little planters, the wine barrel, half wine barrel planters up by the house. But it's so pretty just accented against everything there when they bloom. It's just a short little window of time that they look stunning like this, but they're just so delicate, don't you think? I don't know if you guys like to grow hostas, but I do, this is one of my favorites to grow. Since we're up on the porch, I thought I would just give you a quick look and update on our potted plants that we did here. They are looking voluptuous. Look at that begonia, you guys. The leaves are incredible. And then here we have just stunning, airy, filled goodness. This actually bloomed like a light lavender. I wasn't sure what bloom it would have on it. And one of you told me what it was, I'm not totally for sure, but that's gonna go out into the shade garden when this is done. 
this look is done. That potato vine is just huge. I have a feeling it's gonna spill out all the way to the ground. I'm gonna have to trim it up. The fuchsia is doing much better now. I gave it a little love with some fertilizer. It's going crazy, crazy again. And then this is the little potted, which I didn't know what to do with. I just had this, these are literally in their forage pot still, you guys, it's not funny, but they look, they look good. They're just here, happy as can be. Okay, so back to the garden at hand. So we have some of this red valerian, which has lived its best life and is ready to be cut back. So I'm gonna be cutting that back. We have a dead dogwood. I don't think it's completely dead, but it's suffering. We used to have a big tree here and it um, shaded it and it fell in a storm and it's just not doing well. So we're gonna take that out. I'm not sure if I'll get to it today, but I'm gonna try. And then there's some of this beautiful white yarrow that has lived its best life as well. And so I'm gonna be cutting that back a little bit. We have some lupin that I need to cut as well. And I don't know, there's some weeds. This is the rose bush that has, um, it does put on a really nice rose hip, but I am going to cut it back so I get another flush, but uh, it's beautiful in uh, flush as well and it just is overgrown and look you guys i'm so embarrassed but there is blackberry and we do have a lot of vineyards around us so and grape on the property and so grapevine is just rampant everywhere and so it's just like a weed we pull it out um it would take over this property for sure this is a jurassic mullen <laughs> isn't that gorgeous you guys, it is huge. It is loving its life here as well, and it is just stunning, so I'm leaving it. Okay, so this is where a tree fell, and we had this big, beautiful plum tree right here, and it fell in a wind, an ice storm, and so I've just kind of filled it in because I want a particular tree here, and I'm not sure exactly. I might do a mimosa or a crab apple or something like that. This I just filled in with some things that we had left over, starts and things like that. I think there's some amaranth in here and there's some dahlias coming up. I think they're cafe au lait. There's another mullen over there. And this is called apple of Peru. It's been bug eaten a little bit and I'm not sure what's eating it, but it still is putting on, you can kind of see some of these little blooms here. They're kind of like a, okay, here's one. They're putting on these beautiful little blooms. They're kind of like a pale, pale periwinkle. And then they just have these kind of fun little, like almost lantern type style buds afterwards, which is really pretty. Okay, so we also have some salvia in here, which I love salvia. And this is the blue salvia. I'll try and get to its name. I actually have some lisianthus kind of tucked in here, kind of got hidden this year. So it is literally a mess, a mess, a mess. Look, there's plum branches coming up. There's a puny in here. <laughs> I don't even know how it's surviving, but look at this mess, you guys. And sometimes I just kind of ignore it for a while until I can get to it because we have so many other things going on. But as you can see, this is literally right off the house. And so my project this morning is to just take this area right here and clean it up get fresh compost down, some fertilizer, get all these vines out, trim up that rose bush. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna take that dogwood out and look at, there's even a thistle in here. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's so embarrassing. But you know what? This is my life. This is what I deal with. And it will look really pretty when it's done. It's just gonna take some time and a little bit of elbow grease. So here I go.
that's all weeds that were hidden. That's why it's important to just give everything a little bit of breathing room. It'll be fine <laughs> once I get this done. So I think it's gonna look really good. It is. It can be a little bit scary to do this, but it's gonna look way better when I'm done. And, you know, I might have some room for some extra plants. I might just have to run down to the garden center again and grab some more. So we'll see how this looks in the end. So it's super tempting to leave foliage and dead seed heads partly because it can be scary just to take them out and then not have anything there or it look blank or dead or kind of gross but it's also a really good time to get underneath there cut everything back there's usually some sort of weed underneath there that needs to come out that is hiding underneath all that foliage that is spent the other good thing about cutting things back is a lot of times things will flush again late summer and you're just gonna get this absolutely stunning show. So as hard as it can be or as scary as it can be to cut things back, don't be afraid to do it. As I'm pulling out all of the grapevine, look what I found. Oh gosh, I almost disturbed that. That is just a yellow jacket's nest. They're still sleeping, but there's probably 20 of them on there. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to take care of that. So what I think I'm gonna have to do is just clear enough underneath this rose bush to get to where the blackberry is and the grapevine and cut that way back all the way to the ground. I might just spray a little bit of something on both of the just the canes themselves to try and get them to not do this again next year we'll see if I can get to them it's quite the job I crawled under the bush and I found the two there's only two branches of blackberry and then there was a ton of these grapevine that I'm pulling out under here um, I'm just gonna try and keep an eye on it. I'll probably go, I don't know if I can get that and spray it though a little bit. I don't know what to do. You guys let me know how to get rid of that. It's such a close to the base of the rose. And roses do not like any type of spray and I don't like to use it, but maybe I just keep cutting it back. I don't know. Well, I stepped into the shade for a few minutes cause I am hot. I am getting my workout for sure. My sister Arwen came and she has her little one here today as well, which is super fun. She comes on Fridays generally and helps me with garden chores. And I take her baby for a little bit and get my baby fix. <laughs> so super fun. I definitely are gonna have to do some more purchasing. This is where the septic tank, I don't know those rounds are, the like they have a green kind of where they go to pump it. So I kind of have to keep it clear, but there's one that's towards the front. And I'm wondering if I go get like a terracotta pot or some sort of clay pot and put it up there and just put some you know petunias or whatever I can find at the garden center that will just kind of last uh, through the rest of the summer and be a little more welcoming and almost like stair step it down I don't know you guys tell me what you think but I definitely didn't pick enough up at the garden center the other day I only picked up like three different things not for this space either so I'm gonna have to go get a few things and I'll probably put show that being put together next video but for now I have we have worked hard we have that's a big tackle and I only tackle it every couple of years I should do it every year but you know how it is just check it off on your list and you know so anyways I'm gonna get some compost down finish weeding or finish weeding, then put compost down. And I think I'm gonna hold it there until I decide what I'm gonna do. And I'll pick back up on this project in the next video. The other thing is that dogwood that's back there is just not doing well. And I'm thinking just to completely take it out. It obviously looks ugly. And so then that means I have to put something in its place. I know I'm gonna be putting trees in this, this fall. I just don't wanna do a tree when we're having high heat and it's just super warm and they just struggle. So I don't wanna spend the money on that kind of stuff until I know what I'm gonna put in there. So 
I think I'm gonna have Jason help me lift that tonight at least and get it out of there and uh, just fill it in with some, some things that will look pretty for this year and be done. So Arwen and I are just finishing up and all I got for this little garden is some Roseanne Crimsonville. I think I'm saying that right. It's a geranium, an ever, um, a hardy geranium. And so it's kind of like a blue. That's what it looks like there. Super pretty, it's deer resistant. But I wanted that just at the edge. And because we kind of have this blue, magenta, white, little bit of yellow and some light pink going on in the gardens right now. I'm going to see if I can pick up a few more things at the garden center um, tonight. And we decided where that round septic tank lid is. I'm just going to go get a wine barrel and fill it with some soil and put some things in it just to kind of bring some added color. I think that's going to look really good. But like I said, I'm going to do that on the next week's video because I haven't gotten it and I need to edit this one. So that'll be continuing and I think it'll be really really pretty but I'll show you the finished um, overall what we did today it looks good I think it's gonna fill in more once those dahlias start going and those I believe are the cafe au lays which are the light light pink so that's gonna look really pretty against the blues and lavenders and the magenta um, I thought I have some rutabecchias and some other things that I thought I might toss in here as well that I just seeded up. They probably won't flower this year. They might, if they do, they're gonna be really weak, but I might go pick a few up because that bright yellow would be really, really pretty, I think too. So anyways, we're gonna go get these hardy geraniums planted and uh, just give you a final look. So comfrey tea is something that is easily made. Basically you take all the leaves and I'm gonna pull from the outside of the plant and leave kind of the center crown. And I'm going to put it in a big bucket. You can use a garbage can, whatever you have, and then just cover it with water. It's super simple. And then you just wanna wait for about two to three weeks until it stops bubbling. The one drawback to making comfrey tea as a fertilizer is it stinks really bad. So you wanna make sure you have a lid and far away from where your house is, or in my case, it's super easy. It's on the back side of the greenhouse where we have our composting piles. And I'm just going to get a fresh batch made. So comfrey tea is almost like using like fertilizer like you would from the chicken coop, like collecting all the chicken poo and letting it rest and then putting it on your garden. It's really good that way. And comfrey basically draws up all the nutrients that are down deep into the soil and brings them up to the surface and into the leaves. So you can take those leaves and turn them into something that then can be used as um, a foliator. So basically we can put it in a backpack sprayer and spray like all of our flowers and that kind of thing. A lot of times I don't spray, um, you know, it's just when it's about ready to flower or we're trying to keep, um, so it kind of helps keep like powdery mildew off, like squash leaves and things like that. So the other benefit to it 
is that you can also put it around like the bottom base of like fruit trees and just fill it in a bucket and dump it around. You never want to use it 100% strength. You kind of want to do a 1 to 10 ratio. So just adding a little bit to your bucket, adding some water, and then just drenching the plant. We do a lot of that even with fish emulsion here on the farm. So our new little starts, that kind of thing, we will do a fish emulsion really weak. So any fertilizer, you have to be super careful that you won't burn your plant or kill it. So it's all in moderation. <laughs> so I'm gonna get at it here before it gets too warm today. I'm gonna pull um, this out and actually here in the garden is we're starting to kind of cut some things back. Um, and a lot of things will flush again or just do better if you kind of cut them back and shape them and make them look pretty again. So it's that time of year where we're just kind of cutting back some things. This is a great way to recycle some of those bits and pieces that you're pulling off. So not only can you add comfrey to that water, you can add in some other things like maybe some of my trimmings off some of the herbs or like we've got some lupin that needs to be cut back. So those nice soft leaves, chop it up really fine and just add it to the water. It just makes this nice slurry kind of look. Now comfrey will turn kind of a yellow color before it turns to that deep green. And you're gonna see the bubbles kind of stop bubbling so aggressively when it's ready to use. And then you can just skim it off the top as you're wanting it and use it around your garden. So comfrey is not a bad thing to have around in this case. So I am going to get at it this morning and start making our comfrey tea. So I got the comfrey cut back to a point where I think it still looks nice in the garden because I didn't want to just like mow it down. I've done that before, but this is to the point where the plant is starting to put on new growth. I will be able to make another batch of this later in the summer or even add to this one. So, but I've got like a full wheelbarrow full. And so I'm gonna go get my bucket ready and start in on the process. What I'll probably do is kind of break the leaves into smaller pieces, cut them up uh, so that they can decompose quicker and um, we'll go from there. going to cut back the gardens this time of year one of the things is on my list is actually my petunia baskets this is a basket that I just put on a wine barrel and then I just um, cut off the little hanger part and it just looks beautiful but it starts to get a little ratty at the bottom so what I do is just go in and cut a little bit off give it a haircut and it just does a beautiful forest the rest of the season so I'm gonna go around and do some of our baskets that way this is the one that needs it the most I think the other ones are still you know doing okay but I'm gonna get tackle this one today as well there is a good little tip for you if your basket is looking a little scraggly or a little overgrown or just not doing as well give it a haircut and uh, see how it will bounce back so I just have like a tote behind me that I use and it's kind of falling apart so eventually I'm gonna have to get something that will work a little bit better over time. I'm gonna maybe just get like a garbage can with a lid on it, like the plastic ones. So, but this is what I have to use now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my comfrey leaves in, kind of break them apart, add some water just to cover them and put the lid back on and walk away.
So it's been a couple days since I harvested all the comfrey and oh boy does it stink. It just smells like bacteria really bad if you've ever smelled that. But um, I'm just gonna give it a quick stir. <laughs> See all those bubbles? Ugh, it's disgusting. But this is supposed to do wonders for the garden and will bring all those nutrients that are needed to the plants. So it is worth doing, and this is far, far away from all of our daily activities, so we're not smelling it, but I'm just giving a quick stir. But yeah, you can kind of see all the bubbles coming up. It's starting to turn that glorious golden color, golden green color, more like a puke green, I would say. So it's coming along. We'll let that sit for a little while longer, a couple more weeks, and then it'll be ready to use. Well, thanks for joining me again here at Crowley House Flower Farm. I hope that inspired you to get out there and cut a few things back so you can have another flush of flowers and beauty come this fall. I know I love fall because there's just so much going on in the garden. All the dahlias and all the beautiful like rutabecchia, the echinaceas, the sunflowers. I mean, the list is long. That is the most lush time of year in the gardens. So I am definitely looking forward to it. Fe keeping my fingers crossed that we actually get some rain. That hasn't happened since May. So if I can keep everything alive, I think it's going to look absolutely lovely. Well, until next time, much success in all you do and grow. And we will be seeing you shortly back here at Crowley House very soon. Bye-bye.